When I first came to Long Beach, I had come off of a four-year length of time at El Camino College where I had just been pounding school. I had just been going through class after class, studying constantly, go home, go to sleep, come back to school, study the next day again. I had very little personal stuff that I was doing outside of school. And I came here and I said, I'm gonna join a club. Saw RMC sitting out there at the engineering club day. I saw the Rover. I was like, that looks like FRC. I wanna do that again. I walked into the tent and I never left. Hey, my name is Doe. Uh, I'm a master's mechanical engineering student at Cal State Long Beach. I was the former uh, founder and leader for the Long Beach Lunar Robotics. So every year, NASA challenges 50 schools across the U.S. to compete in the NASA Lunar Robotics competition. So the goal of the competition is to mine for regolith. Regolith is uh, a, a basically like a gravel. It's about two centimeters in diameter, um, and within this gravel, you can find ice and stuff in it. In the competition, the regolith is hidden under. Uh, 30 centimeters of BP-1. BP-1 is like a powdery moon soil. So it's almost like baby powder, basically. So underneath the BP-1, there's 15 centimeters of regolith. So the regolith is what uh, we're trying to get at for the competition. Uh, the reason the regolith is so important is because there's ice within the regolith that can be used for stuff like hygiene, uh, rocket fuel, to grow plants, etc. So the NASA challenged all the teams to build uh, a rover that can dig for this regular thing, essentially. Can you compare last year's mechanical system with this year's? From my understanding, there was a lot of issues that came with the tank track. There was a lot of management to them. Uh, so like the pins that go in between, um, a lot of stuff would I'd imagine get in the middle of it, um, which isn't great for the gravel. So we went with the TPU wheels, so it would act as its own suspension. You don't need to have a suspension system if the wheels are supposed to absorb the impact. These wheels are printed out of TPU 95A thermoplastic uh, polyurethane. And the reason why we chose to use TPU to print our drivetrain wheels is because on a simulated lunar environment, we're not allowed to use pneumatic tires, aka like air-filled tires. There's no air on the moon. So we try to simulate what tires do with 3D printed wheels. And we control the geometry very precisely this way. So can you tell me about some of the differences between this year's box and last year's box? There was no box last year. <laughs> yeah, no, last year's it was a whole platter at the bottom of the rover and we just had a bunch of little 3D printed boxes going along the, side, the, the center of it with wires just jammed down the middle. Like it was, it was bad. What I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that this system used PCBs so that I could actually have the system be compact, small, and be able to teach the students how to actually make them. So this system uses two PCBs so that I could have an external box that would be detachable from the rest of the rover. The current drive base, the way it works is that there are six wheels on each side. They're all linked together by some sprockets. Um, and chain. So there's a couple sets of chain that goes between each wheel individually. Uh, towards the back of the rover, there is a motor uh, and a chain linking that to the one of the other pockets. So for this season, um, our main goal really was to um, get all systems working at some level. So um, writing um, code that would enable all of the uh, different systems, so um, getting the motors to move, getting teleoperations working, autonomy working, the cameras working, um, uh, just a baseline for all of those uh, that we could build off of. Yeah, so my specific sub sim um, dealt with the camera components. The camera was responsible for not only getting a feed to the teleop computer, but also getting a feed so we could actually go ahead and figure out um, objects in the way so we could safely navigate around them. So what's going on with testing right now? Well, we're trying to test the wheels to move since that's what's making our rover move in general. What happened with the last test? Well, you see, one of the sides did work, but like... We're going to test the motors, uh, the drivetrain motors on the rover right now. 
go, if I try and run it very slowly, so let me do 0 0.4, it's gonna go forward. Or I'm gonna do 0 0.3. Try the other way. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Nice! Yay! Like the other side or the right side isn't working at all. Alright, so I'm gonna zero. Watch out, watch out. Watch fingers. Give us a countdown. Is it? Okay, so. Oh, is it not running? No. Fascinating. Mm. So we're pretty sure that it's this wire right here. This one, when it was connected, is uh, when it was connected to here, right? Mm -hmm. Was not getting a signal. This box right here, that white little box. Yeah, yeah, I see that white box. That's connected to this, uh, the, the right, right? That's connected to here, right? Yes. And but we did not get a signal from it. Uh huh. So it didn't move. But this side did. This box, or um, this wire right here, this black wire is connected to this left side, right? And this uh, this wire is connected to that box right there. And that box did give us signal, and it did run. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to figure out first of all is getting this to work, right? And we're pretty sure it's just this wire in and of itself, so we're gonna need to resolder it. Maybe you're gonna need to like retake it off, right? And like reset everything. But hopefully it's not that. Maybe it's just, hopefully it's just like one of the pins that it's not connected right or something. Hopefully it's just this part right here that isn't connected right and that's what's not giving us a signal. Hopefully that's it. But most likely we're gonna need to take that off and just like resolder it. So yeah, that's electrical work. So today, we made some really big leaps uh, with the testing. We brought it outside and tested all the systems that have been hooked up. So that would be the drive base, the red con, and the bucket ladder. You want me to do it? Yeah, you can do the drive train. I'll do the hold, hold the, hold the thing. Okay. Is the is the e stop released? Okay. So this is full speed. Whoa, wait, that's too fast. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Uh, there is a little bit of a hiccup. It doesn't turn very well. So actually, right now we're working on we uh, we changed the gearing in the gearbox. Uh, before it was one to fifteen, uh, and now it is one to uh, twenty-five. So with that, all of those systems actually worked really great. The Redcon uh, I was I was really hoping would work, and it actually worked a lot better than expected with just like a little bit of tweaking. <laughs> Let's do the Redcon. Um, that was actually the first part that I actually designed on the rover, so seeing that work was really, really um, kind of empowering. I'm really surprised it's with that. There's no Which reason. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, hold on. The, uh, the back of the electrical box holding it down. Uh... <laughs> All right. Yeah, I gotta bring that with me. Since uh, I'm not gonna be here. And uh, it should be good to go, which is going to be leading us to uh, our last test of the semester at the beach on Saturday. So we're setting up the bucket ladder right now to make sure it works before our first test. Not, not really. Yeah, that's what I was with, like. With these servos, it's oh, pretty much right. fully extended or retracted. We can reprogram it if we really need to, but... I forgot. Yeah, no, it's okay. Check what spacer. Well, the, they're programmed to only go full or not full. This is what I was telling you about earlier, where you have to know exactly where you're setting the servo. Like, like yeah. look, look, these, these are set to a certain point, you know what I mean? Like a, a program point. Okay. We could but, and then they retract to a program like, point. Bucket ladder, it makes no sense where it's catching. Like it, it may, like it sounds like it's these. Yeah, it, sounds like it sounds like it's these that are catching. That's just the sound of motor stalling. I know, but like, I, there's nothing else yeah. feasibly in the way that's preventing them from moving oh, yeah. except for the motors. Oh, 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 keep, oh, going. Oh, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh. 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 <laughs> that is so cool. Oh. So right now 
now we're testing the rover on the sand for the first time. Alright, three, two, solid. Wait, hold on. Two, one. We've spent a lot of time and effort getting the rover all packed and ready to go. Before we sent it off and tested, we had an issue where the fuse panels blew when the motors got jammed and stalled. But either way, that's what smoked. Because that would make sense. one of the problems that we ran into is a little bit of a poor design with the Spark Maxes, where if they stall, they pull their entire current, so 100 amps per. And that just caused a whole bunch of problems with the fuse panels themselves. So when we get there, we have some new equipment that we can use, and we are going to install it there on the NASA campus before we do our runs. <laughs> 